isotope of carbon and nitrogen are commonly used in aquatic food web studies to illustrate tropic position, so where an organism is feeding in the food web, and dietary source of carbon. Stable isotopes are best collected from dorsal tissue sample of a fish. Today, I'm going to illustrate to you how to prepare that tissue sample to be sent away for stable isotope analysis. Fish are collected through the summer and fall using two types of methods. Trap nets, which are set offshore, and gill nets, which are set throughout the entire lake. Field processing and tissue collection is done immediately after fish are caught. Muscle tissue for stable isotope analysis is collected by removing a fillet of tissue from in front of the dorsal fin. All bones and scales are removed, so you are left with a pure tissue sample. It is important that samples are frozen immediately after collection. Once frozen, they are put into a freeze dry where low pressure and temperature draws moisture out of the tissue, dehydrating them. These are subsamples of my tissue collected in the field, which now go into the freeze dry. This process takes a week. Now that the samples are dehydrated, they're ready for the grinding process. So after grinding it into a thin powder, we transfer the sample into a tiny vial. Here we are going to weigh our samples out in tiny tin capsules to be sent away for analysis. Again, it's very important that between samples you clean all utensils. Using your tweezers, pick up a tiny tin capsule, place it onto the microbalance and tear it so that your balance records zero. Using a small scoopula, pick up a small amount of ground tissue and place it inside the tin capsule. Here you're looking for a target weight of 0.5 milligrams to 1 milligrams of ground tissue. Using your two tweezers, remove the capsule from the microbalance, pinching the top close. Now we fold down the top of the tin capsule like it was a paper bag, folding it down twice. and then finally flattening it from top to bottom. Once flattened, the sample goes into the appropriate labeled spot in the submission tray, which is located on your sample form where you record your sample ID and the weight of that sample. Here you use a flat probe pushing down the sample into the bottom of the tray. So now that I've done all my samples and filled the submission tray, it's time to submit them to the lab. Once it's filled, I cover the lid securely and place it inside the box for shipment along with the submission form where you've recorded the target weights of each um, capsule. And now it's ready to go.